morning, everybody. Welcome to a happy Black Friday. <laughs> it's not just your average Friday, it's Black Friday. Um, and it's a live Friday. We decided rather than our usual live, uh, or I should say our usual pre-recorded video, since we've been doing a Thanksgiving week marathon here all week, live crochet alongs, we're gonna do another one, a special one here on Friday. So happy Black Friday. Just so you know, our Black Friday sale is active in our Etsy shop. The link will be up top. And uh, that's all I'm gonna say about that. It's the biggest one we have of the year. 25% off everything from today through Friday. I should say through Monday. Today, because I did say um, in our last video where I made our little <laughs> uh, gingerbread man candy cane holder here that I was feeling super nostalgic this year and I've had all this nostalgia running through my head about old-fashioned Christmas decorations and I've been thinking about my grandmother's trees and so um, I can't get these little guys out of my head. I turned around after we made the gingerbread man and I made the little snowman and I thought today it would be really fun to design one as we go live. So there's a poll. Mr. Import Stitches has got a poll up at the top of the live chat. Please feel free to vote. We've got four little candy cane character options there and whichever one wins the vote, I'm going to make live. So I haven't got any of these figured out. We literally came up with the four characters that I'd like to, to have a go at making um, about 15 minutes ago. <laughs> I knew I wanted to make more of these guys, but then I thought, I think I want to try and make a completely new one today. So we're going to do this live. We're going to design it as we go. Um, and uh, I am going to write the pattern up as we go. And the pattern will be available later on today in the Etsy shop um, because I'm going to have to make some photographs and we're going to have to edit it and make it look nice and tidy and stuff. But uh, that's part of today's sort of fun. We're going to write and create a pattern as we go. It'll be available later today. Thank you, Anita. <laughs> Um, so hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. If uh, Fri Black Friday isn't something you do where you are, um, you can still take part in uh, a lot of the online sales. A lot of the online stuff is available um, all over the place now. So um, places like Etsy um, and uh, I think probably Amazon, uh, lots of people are just doing Black Friday sales and they're available in a lot of different countries. So um, kind of fun. It's sort of something that we're all kind of getting uh, kind of pulled into. It's kind of a fun event. Um, I hope everybody who celebrated Thanksgiving yesterday had a lovely day and that you're full of good food. And more importantly, you've got a fridge full of leftovers. That's my favorite part about these big holidays. <laughs> um, I love having a, a stomach full of food, but I love even more knowing that when I get up in the morning, I don't actually have to cook anything. I just have to reheat some stuff. Um, Marie's asking us if we have any snow on the ground. No, we woke up today and it was beautiful and sunny and no snow at all, but we do have puddles. I think the snow has been melting. Um, so I think we're supposed to get some this afternoon or maybe overnight, but not enough to really call it snow. It's just gonna be a little sprinkling or a little dusting of icing sugar. Um, okay, so please make sure that you vote in the poll that we've got going. Our options, if you can't see the poll, the options are uh, for candy cane characters, a little doll, a Santa or an elf, a reindeer, or an angel. So those are the four character types that we are going to um, choose from. And then whichever one wins the poll, I'm going to design it as we go. So I've got a couple of candy canes. So if you're going to make one of these little guys, you need a couple, you need two candy canes per character. So I've got two candy canes and you need some ribbon to hang him with. I've got actually quite a lot of ribbon, but I just have a little bit showing here on camera. Um, I have ribbon in different colors to sort of suit whatever happens. Um, you're going to want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, a stitch marker is quite handy. I'm going to be using acrylic yarn and a size four medium weight. Now, if you've got mostly DK, you can use that too. You just might want to use a slightly smaller hook. I'm using a four and a half millimeter. It's also known as a seven. So if you're using the DK yarn, you can use this hook, but you also might want to go down to a G6 or a four millimeter, 4.25, whatever yours is. Um, also needle and thread. So if you're going to add any little embellishments, depending on what it is we're doing, then you might need a needle and thread. Um, I have some beads. So I've got beads ready to go. I've got lots of little tiny itty bitty buttons ready to go if I need them. I don't know because I don't know what we're making yet. And I have two gigantic baskets of yarn. I have every single possible color that I could possibly need just so I don't have to go diving into my stash during <laughs> the live. 
Um, so everything, I, I hope I have everything I need and uh, we will see what wins the poll. I've got a cup of coffee, I've got a cup of water. Um, oh, I even have other stuff. I've got some embroidery floss. I even have some um, things like uh, pipe cleaners. I don't know if I'm gonna need them, but I thought I'd grab them just in case. Mr. and Stitches is here. Hello, everybody. Good morning. I'm uh, drinking a rather normal coffee. I noticed in the chat that a lot of you have got like perfect mugs full of absolute festive floof. It looks amazing. Everybody's got such tasty coffees. I feel kind of boring now. <laughs> and Catherine's asking what the poll options are again. If you can't see the poll, and um, don't worry if you can't, I'm not sure why that doesn't work sometimes. Um, the poll sits up top in the live chat. So if you can't see it, now I can't see it, but um, I wasn't sure if that was because I'm watching the live stream that we are actually broadcasting. So I don't know if that has something to do with it. But if you can't see the chat um, or you can't see the poll at the top, the four options are doll, reindeer, Santa or an elf, um, or an angel. And all of the above does not count. All of the there above? There is no all of the no, above. No, there is no choice. all of the above. <laughs> Um, we have a tutorial for our gingerbread man, um, and this is going to be the the pretty, this is going to be very close to the main construction, um, I'm assuming, I don't know, I have to decide what uh, on that finally when we finally pick a, a character, because there will be little changes, but we do have a tutorial for him, and we have patterns for both of these guys, um, and there's just slight differences between them, obviously he's got a little cap, and he's a little more round, because he's a snowman, um, so we will... Uh, Wait until we've got, what do you say, maybe 125 or so votes? Oh, we're way past that. Are we? Oh, okay. We are at 167 votes plus everyone who voted in the chat because they can't see the poll. That is fantastic. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's call it. Um, if you've got uh, a second, you want to just sort of dive in there and add your vote now just before we call it and then we will see which character has won and um, we will start. I'm not sure what it's going to be. I'm just as I'm going to be very surprised because I can't see the poll. So Mr. And just has to actually end the poll before I can see the results. <laughs> um, but I'm ready. I've got all my things that I need to do and then or I should say I've got everything I need to make, whatever it is it's going to be. And then once we've picked it, I'm going to jump right in. So, uh, Mr. and Stitches, you can call the poll. Okay. 174 votes so far. Fantastic. Here we go. All right. The reindeer has won narrowly with 36% of the vote, followed very closely by Santa then the angel, and then the doll in distant fourth place. So I guess we're making a reindeer today. Okay. In that case, I'm going to need my regular set of tools. I'm going to definitely need my two candy canes. I'm going to worry about the color of the ribbon later, but I'm thinking the red might be good because it'll match his nose. He's going to need a red nose, isn't he? So a red bead... I've got, these are little five millimeter diameter um, plastic round beads. Um, this is not the original tin they came in. Look how cute this tin is. Somebody gave me a double chocolate chip cookie. Uh, we did one of those um, Secret Santas one year in the, in the office and I got a cookie in this tin and I just thought this tin was just so precious. I had to keep it and it's perfect for keeping beads in. So uh, a nice bright red bead for his nose and I'm thinking he's going to need eyes. I don't know whether I'm going to go with blue or black. So I'll hold off on choosing the beads for his eyes. That'll be a little embellishment we worry about later. Um, I'm going to need yarn. So what color is... <laughs> is Thank you, Krista. We've got brown. So let me just move my goodies out of the way here. Brown is a very good reindeer color. Um, I also have a slightly lighter beige, um, but I might make his antlers in beige because he's going to need antlers. And brown, I don't really have a brown that's lighter than that, I don't think. Um, but I think you'll be able to see what I'm doing because I'm going to be crocheting fairly slowly. Plus, I'll be saying what I do as I go. Um, yeah, 
okay I'm gonna start with the brown this is gonna be his antlers I'm gonna worry about other little ads uh, add-ins later so I'm gonna take my odds and ends and just shove them to the side and so that is a size four medium weight acrylic yarn I think this is uh, some red heart comfort or possibly super saver in a nice dark brown I'm gonna pull from the inside and a reindeer has kind of a triangular shaped head if you're looking at him straight on he's got sort of like a bit of a triangular shaped head so I'm going to create a triangular shape that's more or less around the same width as my little guy here so let's see what I can come up with I'm going to start by working at the top of his head and then I'm going to come down in a triangular shape so will I make a, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a triangle from the center out. So here we go. I'm going to start with a cinch circle. So yesterday I showed you how you can do this by just doing it flat on the surface. If you find that it's tricky doing it any other way. Um, so this is how I kind of get, do it all sort of flat on the surface if I'm holding it is too much of a problem. I'm so used to doing it in the air that I actually have trouble doing it on the surface. Let me try that again. <laughs> so there's my little spin. I'm gonna pick up the yarn on my hook. I'm gonna take the rest of that yarn over here. I can actually hold it, but then I want it to be kind of tight. Oh man, I'm having trouble with that. You know what, let me just do it in the air. <laughs> I did it so easily yesterday on the ground. Okay, one cinch circle. I'm choosing a cinch circle because I want the center of his face to be tight with no spaces. And I'm going to start, let's see, I think I want to do four rounds in total. I will start with eight single crochet in the round. So eight single crochet worked into my little cinch circle. Hello, Nico. <laughs> Nico, our very own Christmas elf has just gifted a membership, thank you, and Christina has won it. Welcome back, Christina. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At the end of the eight single crochet, I'm gonna cinch my circle tightly shut with that little tail. I am not going to join my circle, or am I? Let me think. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm going to use my stitch marker to keep track of the beginning and ends of my rows. And is eight, eight does not divide by three. I wanna do this properly. So I'm gonna to have to go with nine. You know what, I'm gonna do that again. You're watching me design on the fly here, guys. Cinch circle, I'm gonna put nine single crochet into this. Or we have a new six. member, Maureen, joined our crafty family. Hello, Maureen, welcome to the family. Thank you for joining. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. You know what? I'm gonna start with six. I'm gonna start with six. Six is a multiple of three. I am building a triangle. I think nine might be too many. So I'm gonna start with six. So instead of eight or nine, I'm starting with six. <laughs> Into the first stitch of what was the beginning of row one, I'm gonna work a corner. So I'm gonna go single crochet chain one single crochet into that same stitch and then I'm going to mark the first stitch with my stitch marker so single crochet chain one single crochet into the first stitch of the row and then single crochet once into the next stitch and then I'm going to repeat that whole thing twice more so into the next stitch I'm going to go single crochet chain one single crochet all into the same stitch and then single crochet into the next stitch and I know this is dark so I'm gonna just quickly show you I'm gonna finish this row and then I'm gonna do it again in a lighter color so you can see what I'm doing and once more single crochet chain one single crochet into the same stitch and then single crochet once into the next stitch so there we go I'm going to start pulling out those little chain ones because I'm gonna that's gonna give me that little triangular look. I'm not joining the row. 
you can see that there's definitely like a triangular shape here. I'm going to show this to you using, let's see, what's a good color? Maybe this green. Oh, goodness, 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 goodness. Donna, thank you, Donna. Thank you for picking up a pattern at our shop. I'm going to show this to you again using green, just so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing since this is very small. So I started with a cinch circle. I worked six single crochet into that circle over top of the short tail. Once I had six, I cinched it shut, did not join. Into the first stitch of the row, which was the first of row one, I'm going to work directly into that. And I'm starting with a little corner. I want to make a little angle so that I can create a triangle shape. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet into the same stitch. Into the next stitch, just single crochet. And then we do this twice more. Into the next stitch, single crochet, chain one, single crochet. So you're making itty bitty little corners, a single crochet into the next stitch, and then one more of those little repeats, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, and single crochet once into the next stitch. So that, if I pull that up, there is my first single crochet, chain one, single crochet. And I'm looking for those little chain ones. Now, you might find it helpful to mark those little corners, those little tiny chain ones with a stitch marker or a safety pin or something really small, just so you can kind of keep track of where they are. Um, I'm gonna mark the first stitch of my row with a single, with a stitch marker as I go. And I'm gonna pull out those little points every single time I finish a row, just so I can keep track of them. Robin, Robin is a family member and with a super generous super chat. Thank you, Robin. Robin says, I think you might, <laughs> I think you two might just be the greatest thing the internet has ever offered the world. My genuine thanks. Thank you so much. <laughs> I will cheers to that. That's awfully sweet. Thank you very much. Um, I am doing this on the fly and I've never actually done this before. So if you see me kind of stopping and thinking, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm actually creating this little reindeer from scratch as we go and I want him to have a triangular head. So I'm not joining my rows. I want it to be an unbroken kind of headpiece, just like the gingerbread man and the snowman I've done. Um, so there's my three little corners and I'm just wondering if it would be helpful to, let me just grab my stitch markers. It might be helpful to mark out those three corners in addition to the first stitch of the row if you have trouble keeping track of where they are, but that's what it's going to look like. So I'm going to go back to my brown. Now I took my stitch marker out. This was the first stitch of my row. I took my marker out because I finished the row and this is a chain one. So that's a chain one corner and single crochet, single crochet. That's a little chain one. Oh, that's the chain one right there, I think. Hmm. Let me count. That's definitely the chain one. And then I single crocheted, single crochet, single crochet, chain one. Yep, that's the chain one right there. Single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, chain one. So that's my chain one. So there, those are my three chain one pieces. And if I pull out on those, I will get that gradual triangular shape. Here we go. Um, I want to make sure that I continually build out in the little chain one spaces and it's tight for a reason. I don't want that little space to show. So I'm going to work a single crochet into the next stitch. This is the first stitch of the row. So I'm going to mark that with a completely different colored stitch marker. Into the chain one. So I'm going to get my hook right under there. I'm going to work a little corner, single crochet, chain one, single crochet. And that's all into that little chain one that I did. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to mark that chain one corner. So I know where it is. 
I'm going to single crochet in each stitch. There are three of them up to the next chain one corner and I'm going to get my hook in under that and go single crochet, chain one, single crochet. And I'm going to make sure that I mark the little chain one. I've got three single crochets. I'm going to single crochet into each of those three stitches. And into the last little chain one, I'm going to work single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Now, how big is my little head here? And then I should have one stitch left. And then that would be the first one. I think that's big enough for a head. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm going to work a single crochet. Actually, I'm going to slip stitch to join at the top. I like it. It's going to work. Yep. And I will fasten off and weave in that tail. Now I'm going to do this a second time because I have to make two sides. So you'll be able to see me do this again. But you see, I've got a very definite triangle shape here. So I've got a nice little sized head. So there was row one was just plain single crochet, six of them in the, in the circle, cinch it shut. And then we just had two rows of creating those three corners. So if you can focus <laughs> and just count your way around for a couple of rows, it's not a big piece. So it shouldn't be too complicated or confusing. I'm going to make this nice and tidy by weaving in the tail. Now I built the body and the head in one go on the previous two pieces, but I don't feel like I can do that without getting a nice, um, I, I, I want to get a nice definition of his little, his little chin. So I want to leave that um, kind of, I'm going to leave my two head piece or my two head pieces separate from the body pieces for now until I decide how I want to join them. And I guess I can still leave that little bit in. Okay, so I'm going to worry about shaping him later. I can also decide which part I like the best for his chin. Mm -hmm. You should have the same number of stitches along each side, so it will be roughly an even triangle. And then we're going to put some antlers on him. Yeah, this is going to be cute. Okay, I'm going to make a second side. Let's see if I can do it exactly the same way. I think what I'll do is I will mark all three of my corners with red clips and I'll mark the first stitch of the row with a an orange clip just so I can keep track a little better. So here we go. I'm going to start with a cinch circle and I'm going to work six single crochets into it. Pull tightly shut. I'm not joining the row. I'm working in the round. Into the first stitch, I'm going to work my first corner for row two. So that is single crochet, chain one, single crochet. So that first chain one is a corner. I guess I don't really need to mark the first stitch if it's right there, so I'm just going to hold that back. Single crochet once into the next stitch. Time for corner number two into stitch number three. I'm going to work single crochet, chain one, single crochet. So that's my second corner. I'm going to mark that little chain one so I can see it. And single crochet into the next stitch. And then in stitch number five, corner number three, single crochet, chain one, single crochet. And I'm going to mark that little chain one with a stitch marker. There we go. And single crochet into the next stitch. That was stitch number six from the first row. That completes row two. I'm not joining. 
I definitely have that nice little triangle effect going. I don't think I need this stitch marker. So now I want to work single crochet into the next stitch. That brings me up to the little chain one space. So I'm gonna get my hook in under there. It's nice and tight. And I'm gonna repeat that little corner. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet, nice and tight. Don't want any spaces showing. Come on. Ooh, that's really tight. Let's try that again. Almost too tight for my little hook. Come on, there we go. All right. So single crochet, chain one, single crochet. I'm gonna mark out that chain one so that I don't lose it. Single crochet into the next three stitches. That brings me up to corner number two. So that's the tiny little chain one. I'm gonna go single crochet, chain one, single crochet. All right, mark that little corner. Single crochet into the next three stitches. And this is the last corner into that little chain one space. I'm gonna work single crochet, chain one, single crochet. There we go. And then single crochet into the last stitch and slip stitch into the next stitch to join. Okay, so I don't need my stitch markers again after I finish row three. There is my little triangle. It's nice and tight. I don't have any spaces showing. I was able to make two roughly identical, so I'm happy with that. Um, this is head number two, and I want to sew my head together. So I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna leave a tail. I'll leave a long tail on this. I'm gonna leave a long tail on this because I'm probably gonna sew the head. How am I gonna do this? I'm gonna do, I want the face to show up on, oh, yeah, that might be interesting. Okay, I'm gonna leave a tail and I'm gonna sew most of the head together. So if you hear me pausing, it's because I'm thinking, this is what I kind of want. I want to draw it out here. This is his little head, a little triangle. And I'm gonna make his body roughly like a triangle like this little guy here. So his body's gonna be mostly triangular shaped. But what I want is for his chin to kind of be over top of the front of his body. So I'm gonna to have to do a little layering with this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew most of this head all the way around, but I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave the bottom part um, open so that I can kind of put the body underneath it. Yes, that's the plan. Okay. I may actually, you know what? I'm not going to do this yet because I'm going to probably be easier to decorate the side that I want for side one. So I'm just going to put these aside. So two triangles for the head. Boop, done. Now I'm going to do the body. I'm going to do the body roughly the same as this little guy. So I'm going to start with a slip knot, I'm going to chain five, and I'm going to half double crochet into the second chain from the hook and in each of the remaining three. So I want four half double crochet all the way across. Joyce, thank you so much for picking up a pattern at her shop. So four single crochet, and then we are going to increase for his body. So chain one, turn, two, half double crochet in stitch number one, half double crochet in the next two stitches, and half double crochet twice into the last stitch. So this is the same as the body of our gingerbread man. So that brings us up to six stitches, chain one, turn, two half double crochet in the first stitch, half double crochet in each of the next four stitches and two half double crochet in the last stitch chain one turn 
two half double crochet in the first stitch, half double crochet in each of the next six stitches. And two half double crochet in the last stitch. That brings us up to a stitch count of 10. Mm -hmm. Chain one turn and then for rows, uh, what are we on here? One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We are just gonna half double crochet in each stitch all the way across, chain one turn. We want a stitch count of 10 for each row. And that is the body. So that's row one of three. Row two of three and row three of three. So that's three rows of just half double crochet in each stitch all the way across. Each row had 10 stitches in it. And that is it for the body. I think that is definitely big enough. Would it be weird to make his face in a different color? And then like, would that be strange? and then make his antlers the dark brown. Dun, dun, dun. Let's Just wait and see what everyone thinks. That's what I'm picturing. I don't, I don't think that would be strange. I don't think it would be strange. I'm just not sure if it's necessary. It'll stand out more. But then again, you are gonna put a nose on the end of that. Yeah, right? he's gonna have a nose right here. Hmm, well, let's see what everyone in the chat So thinks. if you can kind of picture that. I'm sure two-tone reindeer exist in fantasy land. Yeah, well, I mean, I just, I also <laughs> realize, like, like you're going to see the shape. He's going to have antlers. It's going to be really obvious. Um, just to kind of give you a, an idea, um, I'm going to snip off. It this. is hard to see the darker colors on the camera. Yes. Um, um, but if you hold it closer. It's the shape. It's the shape. It helps. So um, let me get the little candy canes in position. It's going to look something like this so there's his little head there's his little nose and then he's going to have two little antlers <laughs> let me get my other needle here so there you go it's going to look something like this so <laughs> and of course he's going to have eyes um he looks like an alien reindeer um, meep, meep, he's, meep. he's, uh, you know what? This is really cute. I'm going to make an entire one in, in the lighter color. So now that I know what I'm doing, I will continue this one in the dark brown later, but I'm going to make one in the lighter color. Um, cause I know it's hard to see. So, uh, please forgive me for, I'm, Jada did her own poll. I'm designing on the fly here. Her own Jada Lane. I'm going to make Lane. an entire reindeer out of this lighter beige color and I'm going to give him dark brown antlers. So, so you can see quickly what I've been doing. So let me get my stitch markers back out. Um, this is, this is, this is how I work. So cinch, cinch circle, chain one to secure six single crochet into the circle. One, two, three, four, five and six. Cinch it tightly shut. So cinch circle with six single crochet, nice and tight. Now I wanna do my three corners. So into the first stitch, no joining. I'm gonna work single crochet, chain one, single crochet. This is better, eh, you guys? You can see this. I'm gonna mark that first little tiny chain. Chain one with a stitch marker. Single crochet into the next stitch. Corner number two, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, all into the same stitch. Mark that chain one with the stitch marker. 
single crochet into the next stitch. Hello, Cheryl. Cheryl's been a member for 14 months. Thank you, Cheryl. Cheryl with a membership milestone says, I love watching your thought process. It's amazing. Well, I'm glad it's at least entertaining and not like, what is happening here? <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. Corner number three, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, all into the same stitch. I'm gonna mark that last chain one with my little stitch marker and then single crochet into the last stitch. So there we go. I'm not joining the row. My stitch markers are all marking out those chain one corners. I think you can really see that now. This is us making a, um, a tiny little triangular shape with very minute corners. So I don't want corner spaces, which is why I'm using the, the one single crochet, but it's just enough to get you a bit of a, a degree, a, a bit of an angle, not quite 90 degrees, to give you kind of a triangular shape. So there we go. Um, I'm going to do one more row where I single crochet into the next stitch. I'm gonna continue that little corner thing in the chain one spaces from the previous row. So into the chain one, very nice and tight, single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Goodness gracious. Hello, Carlene. Thank you for picking up a pattern at our shop. And Deanna. Hey, Deanna. Deanna's in the house. Deanna with a super chat says, I thought you were making a reindeer, reindeer weir head with the curves of the canes and the antlers. My brain is working too hard. Oh no, you know what? I actually considered that, but I kind of want him to match this little set. So I want him to be like a little character with arms and legs, like he's standing up and walking. So I'm I'm making the reindeer to match this, as opposed to just the head with the antlers. Yes, I've seen those, love them, but I want him to match these two little guys. So that's kind of the, the, thing, the thought process here. I'm gonna single crochet in each stitch up to my next stitch marker, which I know marks a corner. This is why the stitch markers are super useful. Uh, I love that idea though too, Deanna into the little chain one i'm going to go single crochet chain one and single crochet nice and tight don't want any spaces showing there we go we also got a happy little fox super sticker from vicky vicky thank you so much oh that's cute <laughs> um that's corner number two and now i'm going to single crochet in each stitch all the way across to my third stitch marker. Actually, I guess I don't really need these guys in here after I've completed the third row. Into my third stitch marker, I'm gonna work single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Carol Doyle, I see you. Carol, who's been a member for 59 months. Thank you, Carol, with a membership milestone. I think I might like the head to be a little larger, more like Santa and gingerbread person. Would I just continue the same process for one more round? Absolutely. So if you want it to be a little bit bigger, I think mine are roughly the size. I was kind of going for that roughly the same shape, but if you want them to be a little bit bigger, you can do one more row. So same thing, mark out your chain one corners and just continue that single crochet, chain one, single crochet in the chain one corners. You're only ever gonna have three corners. And um, when you're done, just slip stitch to join at the top. I'm gonna do a second one here. Do you think it needs to be bigger? Should I do another row? What do you guys think? He's about the same size as my little... I, I think uh, one more row bigger. Yeah, one yeah. more row. I think that makes sense. I think, I almost think it might be too big. Yeah? Yeah. He's about, because remember, we're going to put his antlers on, and that's going to be pretty big. Oh, that's right. The antlers are yeah. going to... I'm going to stick with three Pop rows, up a bit. Um, but honestly, if you're using a DK weight yarn, you might find that it just seems a bit small. So definitely do the, the extra row Maybe like Carol's suggesting. Maybe an oversized nose. That would be good. <laughs> Cheryl! Thank you, Cheryl! Okay, so I don't need any tail on side one. Nico! Oh my goodness gracious. Debbie, thank you, Debbie. Debbie's picked up a couple patterns at the shop. Thank you so much. And Nico has gifted another membership. Maeve has won it. Congratulations, Maeve. Welcome back to the family. All right. So I'm going to pull out those little corners. 
And so yeah, as I was saying, if you're using a thinner yarn or a smaller hook and you want it to be a bigger head, go ahead and add one more row of increasing where you just work the corners. So single crochet in the single crochets, and when you get to the tiny little chain one corner spaces, there should be three of them, just do the same corner treatment. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet in the chain one. And it's tight, it's supposed to be tight, it's okay if you have to slow down a little bit. So there's head pace number one. I'm gonna do that once more, and then I'm gonna make the bodies. So cinch circle, six single crochet into the circle. Cinch it nice and tight. Immediately start with a corner in that first stitch. So single crochet, chain one, single crochet. I'm gonna mark out my corners so that I don't have to think. So the, the chain one gets the marker and then I single crochet once into the next stitch. Then I do it again. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet in the same stitch. Pause, mark that chain one with a stitch marker, single crochet once into the next stitch. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet into the next stitch. Pause, mark out that chain one for the corner and then single crochet into the next stitch. So now I've done row two Row three, I'm going to increase in the corner, the little chain spaces only, and I actually don't need to keep putting in my stitch markers because that's the last row. So single crochet in the single crochets. Single crochet, chain one. Single crochet, really tight in that little chain one. That's corner number one. Single crochet in the next three single crochets. Into the chain one, I'm gonna work. So I'm working right into the chain. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Hello, Lynn. Lynn with a super cute super sticker. Thank you, Lynn. And it's Lynn's first, thank you so much. Single crochet into each of the next three stitches. And my last little corner into that single crochet, or that chain one, I should say. I'm gonna work single crochet, chain one. Single crochet. There we go. And then single crochet into the last stitch. I'm going to slip stitch into the top to join. And let's just pull this out so I've got my little triangle showing. I'm going to leave some tail to sew my head pieces together because I think I'm going to do kind of a layering thing. There we go. So that'll be the back. This will be the front. So now I've got, here's his little head starting to shape up. There's his little nose. And I'm thinking maybe white eyes. Does that make sense? Maybe. Blue eyes? Would reindeer have blue eyes? Why not? That's kind of cute. I don't know. I'll pick the beads later. I'll put that back out of the way. So that's his head done and now I'm going to whip up two body pieces. Both body pieces are identical. They are based on the gingerbread man. Um, but because I'm not building them directly onto the head piece, unlike the gingerbread man, I'm just sort of starting them from the neck, so to speak. So slip knot on hook, chain five to begin. And skip the first chain from the hook, half double crochet in each of the remaining chains. That'll be four stitches. Anna is asking where I got my little scissors from. My little fairy scissors, they're embroidery scissors. My mother-in-law got them for me. Um, actually, those are the fairy stitches. These are my little cat stitches. I got these at a sewing shop. Also embroidery stitch, uh, embroidery scissors. Um, they're the kind of thing when you're checking out at the checkout counter where they've got like boxes of cute things. They were kind of all stuck in there. But I know you can get embroidery scissors of all kinds of shapes and sizes like fairies and cats and bunnies and stuff. Um, 
um, in several places online, including I've seen them on Amazon. So you can take a look for embroidery scissors or fairy embroidery scissors on Amazon. Uncle Steve. Uncle Steve is in the house. Uncle Steve has gifted a membership. Thank you so much, Uncle Steve. And Lynn has won it. Congratulations, Lynn. Welcome to the family. At the end of row one and every row in the body, chain one turn and we start an increase two half double crochet in the first stitch, half double crochet in each of the next two stitches, and then two half double crochet in the last stitch. So we're just increasing on the ends. Chain one turn. That brings us up to a stitch count of six. Increasing again, two half double crochet in the first stitch, half double crochet in each of the next four stitches, and two half double crochet in the last stitch, which always kind of curves down the edge a little bit. And that brings us up to eight stitches. Chain one turn. One more row of increasing, two half double crochet in the first stitch. Oops. We're gonna half double crochet in each of the next six stitches. and two half double crochet in the last stitch. That gives us a total of 10 stitches all the way across. And now we're gonna do three rows of just straight single crochet, or half double crochet, I should say. Chain one turn at the end of every row. Half double crochet in each stitch across. You'll have 10 stitches in each row. And one more row of just plain half double crochet in each of those 10 stitches. Oops. There we go. Yeah, that's going to be really cute. His little chin's going to kind of poke down into into the top of his his uh, just just below his neck, and then we've got room for his his arms and legs. I do not need to leave much of a tail on side one, so I'm just going to trim that, weave in my tails, and then I'm going to build side two exactly the same. Mr. and Stitches, are you making more coffee? No, I am not. Oh. I got excited for a minute. You there. got excited. <laughs> <laughs> we destroyed that pot. We did. It's one of those exciting kind of mornings. All right. So. I poured myself some water. You might have heard that. Oh, okay. Boring. Yeah. Yeah, it's boring. All right, I'm going to make side number two, and then I'm going to do a little decorating before I stitch the two sides together. So side number two, starting at the neck, slip knot on hook, chain five, half double crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each chain across. So that's four stitches to begin row one of the body. And then gentle increasing on either edge. Steve, thank you very much for picking up a few patterns. Uncle Steve's busy in the Etsy shop. 
two single crochet in the first stitch, single crochet into each of the next two stitches, and two single crochet into the last stitch. That brings us up to six stitches. Chain one turn, two half double crochet in the first stitch, a half double crochet in each of the next four stitches, and two half double crochet in the last stitch. That brings us up to eight stitches. Chain one turn, two half double crochet in the first stitch, two half double crochet in each of the next, I should say one half double crochet in each of the next six stitches, and two half double crochet in the last stitch. That brings us up to 10. And now we chain one turn, half double crochet in each stitch all the way across for 10 stitches for three rows. A tummy patch. Oh, like a, um, like a little white belly. You know what? That kind of makes sense, doesn't it? He's going to be standing up. Yeah, let's do it. Broidery thread to sew a big, bigger red nose and use black beads for the eyes, says Regina. Okay. I could also crochet him a big red nose. That's not difficult to do. Um, I just thought I would use a bead since I had them, but you know, you're right. He maybe needs a bit of a bigger red nose than that bead allows. I wonder if I've got a button that would suffice. I might try that. Welcome, welcome everybody. Happy Friday. If you're just joining us, we are making a reindeer candy cane holder. Reindeer as voted on by the early birds here to the show. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven rows total. That is the front or back. I'll decide later. I'm gonna leave some tail for sewing. So I'm making this reindeer fairly light so that we can see what's going on. I'm silly, I should have started with this, but I was thinking nice dark brown. So I'm gonna go back and finish him though. So I have two of these little guys. I'm gonna weave in this short tail. I'm gonna leave the long tail out for sewing later and we are gonna to get to some fun. Let's start decorating this guy. So, I'm seeing he needs a re bigger red nose than the little bead that I had, agreed. Um, his eyes, I might, I've got, I've got different beads. So there's his back, here's his front. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna layer the pieces together so that the back of his head is like, I don't know if I'm gonna show. Both sides, the chin on both sides. I think I might just do this sandwiched so that the back of his head doesn't have a chin. Sort of the back of his body comes up and across the back of his head. And then the front, the chin kind of is overlaid on top of his body so that there's more of a chin. Joya, thank you so much. Joya has picked up a few patterns at the Etsy shop. Thank you, thank you. Uh, but I'm gonna worry about putting them all together later. So a belly patch, did I see that as a suggestion? Don't forget a little tail at the back says Carrie. That's a good idea too. Actually, the belly patch has been suggested multiple times for a while. Okay, so, so we're thinking a white belly, right? This is usually what he is. I've got plenty of white yarn here. I might actually have enough in my scrap bag. Uh, that's kind of thin. Mm. Jada's premium storage container. That's nice and shiny. Ziploc plastic I bag. I have enough of that. Not, not a sponsor. Shiny. Yeah, not a sponsor. <laughs> I think that's all the white I've got in there. I like to like use up my super duper little tiny tails for things, so. I might have enough, I think I might have enough with this to make like just a little round. 
just a little circular belly. So here we go. Um, maybe an oval as opposed to a circle. So I'm gonna start with a cinch circle and I'll start like his head. I'll start with six. Will I start with six or will I start with, no, I'm gonna start with eight. Two, three, Do you have googly eyes in your little bead uh, um, stash? I do have googly eyes. Googly but eyes would be cute. None that are small enough. Oh, the bigger the better. I don't think, I think they might be too big. Yeah. Eight, eight single crochet. Huge eye reindeer googly eyes. <laughs> I'm going to work uh, two half double crochet into the first stitch. So two half double crochet and I'm going to mark that first stitch of row two with a stitch marker and then I'm going to go a single crochet, two single crochet into each of the next three stitches. And then two half double crochet into the next stitch and then two single crochet into each of the remaining three stitches. So I'm creating just a little bit of an oval shape by varying up the stitch size. There we go. So that's back at the beginning. What do we think? Bigger? Smaller? Don't really need it to be too, too big. It's a bit bigger, one more row. Well, let's try one more row, and if it's too big, we'll go back to this row. So let's go, I'm gonna just go to single crochet only. So single crochet in the, two single crochet in the first stitch to start. I'm gonna mark that first stitch. Single crochet once in the next stitch, and then two in the next stitch, one in the next, two in the next stitch, one in the next, two in the next stitch, one in the next, two in the next stitch, one in the next. Thank you, Claire. Thank you so much. Claire's just picked up a few patterns at our Etsy shop. Making use of our Black Friday sale two single crochet in the next stitch, single crochet once into the next, hmm, two into the next stitch, one into the next, two, and then one. Hmm, well, that may not be too bad at all. I don't know, what do you guys think? Yeah, I think that's probably okay. I'm going to single crochet into each of the next two stitches just to kind of like oval it up a little bit more and then fasten off with a slip stitch. So I'd say that's pretty good. That's a, that's a base of eight. I have a little bit of ovaling on row two. So I start with two half double crochet, um, two half double crochet, and then two single crochet into each of the next three stitches, two half double crochet, and then two single crochet into the last three stitches. And then it's just single crochet in the third row, but continuing that increase pattern. So two, one, two, one, two, one, all the way around. Just, just to kind of give me a bit of an oval shape and less of a circular shape. Um, I think this works. So I'm gonna just leave all this tail here and I'm gonna sew this directly on to the front 
of my reindeer. I'm going to put it right in the middle, making sure that I've got enough space for his chin to land. So I'm going to thread up that yarn needle. Oh, is this my big one? This is my big one. I don't need that. Come here. There we go. So let's, I'm going to hold it in place. I'm going to try and keep that oval like the, the oval bits sort of like at the top and bottom. And then I'm just going to go around and sew it down like I would any old applique piece by picking up a loop on the edge of the... So this is a loop on the reindeer. I'm not going through. So I pick up a loop on top and then I run it right through the edge of the little applique. And I keep pausing to make sure it's not moving on me. And I try to grab the loops directly below where the edge of the applique is. And if, uh, if this works out, <laughs> which I think it will, I mean, obviously we're all kind of pitching in some great ideas here. Um, I'm going to write this up and we'll have this pattern up in the shop later today. I will make it in um, some nice, make, I'll make it again in some lighter colors so I can take some useful photographs for the pattern. And uh, that will also be part of our Black Friday sale. I had to have a little reindeer. I actually, I'm thinking I might, I might, I might have to do all of the little characters because I really like. Since we started brainstorming before the live stream, I was like, well, now I want to make all of them. The crew is asking if I should make you more coffee. Uh, What's yes. your answer? I think you should make me more coffee. I should. <sighs> I knew it. Well, I don't even feel like I had like <laughs> my usual amount today. I feel like I don't know what happened. Well, I mean, to be fair, it looks like you're only about halfway through that little reindeer. You're not going to believe this, but we've been streaming for over an hour. Are you kidding? I am not kidding. No, we have not. No, uh, yes, we have. Oh my gosh. That went by quick. That went by so fast. Well, I'm not going to bother with a poll because it's going to be like 99% yes. <laughs> oh, well, I have to I'll see this I'll just drag through. my feet over to the coffee maker <laughs> and slave away. I have to see this through. We have to make this little guy. <laughs> Everyone insists more coffee. What about Jada's caffeine level? What if it's too high? I could totally use more coffee. <laughs> um, all right, all right, all right. More coffee it is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's his little belly. Oh, gosh. Good idea with the belly, guys. Good idea with the belly. I'm going to make a little knot here. Like a little knot underneath. Lynn! Thank you so much, Lynn. Lynn has picked up a pattern at the shop. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, I'm gonna make that nice and tight. And I'm just gonna slip it under here. There we go. And I like to weave the tail in underneath some of the surface stitches, not too many. And because it's usually pretty tight and I've knotted it off, I'm not really worried about the yarn coming undone. So, that's enough of that. I'm just gonna snip that. That yarn is looking pretty rough, so I'm glad I was able to use up a little bit of it. That is cute. Okay, so there's his little tummy. And now I think I want to do his antlers. But will I do that? I might do his antlers right through the top of his head to give it extra strength. 
think I think I'll do his antlers last. So let's decorate his face. He needs a bright red nose and a pair of eyes. So let's see what I can do in, by way of nose and eyes. Uncle Steve, thank you. Uncle Steve is rocking the house with another gifted membership. And Debbie has won it. Fantastic. Congratulations, Debbie, and welcome to the family. And Nico! <laughs> Nico, not to be outdone. <laughs> Thank you, Nico. Nico has gifted another membership too, and Corrine has won it. Congratulations, welcome to the family, Corrine. Marvelous. Yeah, see, I'm, more, I'm looking pretty low, it's already cold. I can't believe it's been an hour. All right, so we're thinking this, this little bead is too small for his nose. Is that the general consensus, everybody? Um. He needs like a brighter red nose, a bigger red nose. Hmm. All right, well, I'm gonna put that there. So that's that's what we're working with. Let me see if I can find something bigger. Like, do I have a bright red button, for example? And the answer is, of course, yes. So I've got this. Would that be better? And get his little face put together here. Sorry, with all the fiddling. Okay, there we go. So, what about that? Now that's a button, so I'd have to sew it down. Not a big deal, but the button. It's also a richer red. This is a little kind of like this is almost like an, an orange red. So this is a much more red red, which I think. I think is I think it's better. Yeah, I think we're gonna go with that because it's almost kind of a bit lit from it's a neat little vintage button. I'm gonna get this as close to the screen as I can here. This is a a a vintage button. I'm pretty sure it's from the 50s because this came out of a an old bead stash that was my grandmother's, and I've got a whole bunch that are this color. And at just the right angle, the light kind of comes in underneath it and lights it up a little bit. Um, so I think this would be a really good since I'm on that whole nostalgia kick. All right, I'm going to sew this on. That's the button. Let's go sewing thread. Go, go gadget sewing thread. Did you get the gifted membership from Deanna? Oh my gosh, did I? I don't know. I heard um, Uncle Steve earlier and I heard Nico. And then we got one from Deanna. Deanna! No, I don't think and I the did. the winner of that gifted membership is Rita. Thank you, Deanna. I'm so sorry. I didn't see that. I've had my eyes glued to this button. <laughs> Deanna, thank you so much. Deanna has gifted a membership. And like the mister says, Rita has won it. Congratulations, Rita. Welcome to the family. All right. So the button. Button it is. I am going to attach my thread on the back edge. Nina! Thank you, Nina! Nina's picked up a pattern in her Etsy shop. And I'm going to sew this button down as tightly as I can because it's a little shank button. It's got like that little shank thing at the bottom. So I'm going to sew it down at the very bottom edge, making sure this doesn't twist. There we go. So right and I'm not doing anything super special here. I'm just going to try and make sure that I sew this button down as tight as I can, almost so that it wants to sort of sink right through the stitch. Nico! <laughs> Nico dances into the Etsy shop, picks up a pattern. <laughs> Nico, thank you. Oh my goodness gracious. Robin, thank you. Thank you so much. It's a busy little shop. Uh, but it's a really great sale. It's our best sale of the year. 25% off everything. All week long, all weekend long, so no need to feel like you gotta roar right over if you want to, if you're really enjoying the show. And I'm loving this nose. Yeah, that was a much better suggestion. Great. Okay, I'm gonna think, I'm gonna just one more little stitch to make sure it's in there. Don't want it coming out. And then I will sew it. Coffee is in mid-brew. I'll make a little knot on the back. 
Thank you, sweetheart. I'm really looking forward to that. We're all out of eggnog, though. I know. Gonna coffee and eggnog is so good. I love coffee and eggnog. We have maple syrup. Oh, that might not be bad. If you want to zazz it up a little. Um, I might, I might take you up on that. I do like maple syrup. Oh, heck, I could just have a candy cane in my coffee. That's another thing I like. Oh, yeah. It is that time of year. It is that all. time of year. Okay, replacing needle in needle case so as not to lose needle and cause trouble later on. Hugh, thank you, Hugh. Hugh has picked up a couple patterns. Thank you so much. Okay, that's looking good. Now we need a pair of eyes. So, all of my googly eyes are massive. Marie, thank you so much, Marie, for picking up a few patterns. Um, the googly eyes are too big. I think that would be hilarious, but I think the googly eyes are too big. So, I can go with, I have, um, I've got big black eyes, which are kind of, oh, that's kind of cute. So I've got big black eyes. I can do that. Um, see if I can get them to, they might just stay in place if it's sitting a little lower. So I'm gonna try and like get them to sit kind of close or would they sit the bottom of his face? No, they sit up at the top of his face, right? Or, or they sit kind of out to the side. Well, I don't want them to look dorky. <laughs> there, so there's a couple of, those are nice big black eyes, so I can do that. Um, or somebody mentioned embroidery. I could embroider them too. That wouldn't be a big deal. Uh, I don't have any Irish cream, Diane, but I do like the suggestion. Mini candy canes, says L. Mini candy canes for just the head and crochet hoof doing. <laughs> That'd be so cute. Um, yeah, I want him to look just like this guy. So I'm going to do him the same way so that he kind of looks like he can walk and talk with the rest of our nutty group. Um, but I think I like, I like, uh... oh, the coffee's ready? I actually saw that in the chat. I didn't even hear the machine finish. <laughs> I can just communicate with you through the chat? This That's is hilarious. Awesome. Um, okay, I'm coffee thinking. Coffee is ready. I'm thinking these are a really good size, and I think I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with You them. want to take a 30 second break? So I'm going to take a 30 second break and go fill up my coffee. Um, yes, I'm going to do that. Uh, give me one second, everybody. Okay, I'll be right back. Um, yeah, I'm good with those eyes. Okay, so I'm going to get myself some more thread here. I'm going to stitch on his eyes. Um, so I think the plan is to get him decorated, get him stitched together, and then I'm going to add his antlers on. Can I thread this? How blind am I today? There we go. Elle! Thank you, Elle!
Okay, so I'm going to go with the nice big black eyes. I'm going to put them roughly where I had them sitting. So I'm going to connect the yarn on the back of the head or the inside of the headpiece. And I'm just going to stitch these guys down. Nothing fancy. Make sure they're in there nice and tight. L, thank you again. <laughs> All right, so that's one down. And, ow, careful not to poke yourself. There we go. And getting the eyes to be nice and even, this is the trick. So I use the first stitch to be a little on the loose side and then I, I position it a little bit better. I think that'll be about right. Yes. And then I'm gonna try and Make it nice and tight. This is a very pokey little needle. There we go. Okay. Yeah, that'll do. And I'm gonna knot my thread on the back. Susie, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. So that's his little face, nice and simple. A bright red nose and two black eyes. He's got a little belly. And just to remind you, it's going to look like, he's going to look like this. He's going to have little arms and legs when I've got them all stitched together. So I want to make sure that those shoulders, so his head's not going to sit too much lower. <laughs> oh, again, thank you. <laughs> um, so I think what I'm going to do is, this is what I'm thinking. I don't really want the back of his head to be, to look like the front. So you see how I made the two pieces identical. So I think I'm going to actually stitch the head piece number one onto the inside of the back so that the back of him just kind of looks like the, the back of his neck meets the back of his head. And then I'm going to sew this piece on, I'm going to sandwich the back head piece in between the two body pieces. And then this guy's going to actually sit out front so that when I stitch down his face, his chin kind of is, is defined across the, the front piece of his, of the chest, I guess. So let's see, what would make the most sense? I think I'm gonna sew, I'm gonna use this sewing thread on the head piece. I'll refine this when I make number two, but I'm gonna use this one. Should I sew these two pieces together? And then down and through? Sure, why not? All right, I'm gonna sew the head pieces together. I'm gonna put the antlers on last because I wanna actually sew right through or crochet right through both pieces. So I'm just going to do a running stitch where I go in and then out and then in and then out. Uh, nothing super fancy. Kind of the same way I did the gingerbread men. Now, I want... Oh, 
Do you see how I've done this? So I've got the back part of his, the back of his body. I'm sandwiching the back of his head in between the back and the front of his body. And then I'm bringing the chin of the front of his face down on the front. And I'm going to try and sandwich these three pieces or these four pieces together. You people are saying, don't forget the ears. The ears? Are you yeah. You do ears or just antlers? I'm going to put on, I'm going to do both. But I think I'm both. also going to add them again to the head afterwards. This is going to be a marathon, marathon live stream. Good thing I made coffee. It's a good thing you made coffee. <laughs> so I'm going to sandwich the chin on the front, but the inside of the head sits to the inside of the bodies. And I'm going to sew right through everything. So right through the face, right through the body, right through the other side of the face. Make sure I get that. And right through the body. Okay. One little stitch at a time. Well, he's feeling a little more solid now, so I can try and take my thumb off things. I'm going to go right through both pieces to the bottom of his chin. There we go. And back through the body, through the head, and through the other bit of the body. All right, and now I'm just going to stitch up the side of the head. So I'm going to worry about stitching the body together with the actual body strain. I think that looks kind of better. Like the back of his head is sort of like, like part of his body and his nose sits out on the front of his head, like on the front of his body here, as opposed to having like a nose on both sides, if that makes sense. And I'm not going to knot off my sewing threads just yet. I'm going to leave them just so I know that there's nothing extra I want to do with them. So that's the head sewn together. And now I want to sew the body together, remembering that I need to leave arm holes uh, for the shoulders. He's cute. I'm liking it. Okay. All right, so I'm starting at the bottom corner. I'm going to do that running stitch all the way up the side. I'm working through, I'm close, as close to the edge, making sure I get through both pieces of fabric. This is easy, messy sewing. It doesn't need to be fancy. You can't see the stitches because you're using the same color. And I want to leave about a finger hole size. So I'm going to bring my needle into the inside. I'm just going to run it. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to run it underneath some stitches back here. Don't even have to bring it to the inside. I'm just going to run it through some stitches across the back. That's nice and neat. You don't see anything. I come out the other side because I'm not going around the head this time. That leaves me with a nice finger sized hole on the other shoulder and then I go back down the other side. Easy peasy. And once I get this stitched up, we will look at putting ears on him and antlers. That's really going to make his face look like A reindeer. Okay, so that's him all the way down. I'm not going to cut that off just yet. I'm going to leave that just in case I need it. So, quick check. Let's make sure 
we've got nice working oh my gosh I just love putting the candy canes in it makes me it makes me smile so there we go we've got <laughs> dun, 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 dun. we've got a little dancing body his head's in there nicely he's got a little chin and his nose is showing now he needs ears and antlers so I'm leaving out his little sewing tails just because I'm not sure if I'm done with them yet <laughs> okay ears same color um, pretty long so let's say think 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 all right I'm gonna start with a slip knot I'm going to join right at the corner so right where the corners of his head is I'm gonna put the ears off the corners I think that deer generally have ears that kind of come out either side of the head so let's not complicate things here that's a sewing thread get out of the way all right uh, I want to work right through both corners. So I'm going to get my hook through both corner pieces of the head. I'm going to make sure I get the whole corner there. And I'm going to join my yarn with a slip knot or a slip stitch right in the corner, working through both pieces of the head. And I'll just pull that tail into the body later. I'm going to chain out, let's see here, three four, chaining four, slip stitch into the second chain from the hook, half double crochet into the next chain, slip stitch into the last chain, yeah, and then slip stitch back into the same place uh, but sort of through both pieces of the head to secure it so there we go now is that big enough in the middle you know what let's make that half double crochet a double crochet instead so chain four slip stitch into the second stitch double crochet into the next stitch let's just make that slightly taller yeah and then slip stitch into the last chain there, that's a slightly fatter ear. I like that better. And then we will slip stitch to join, fasten off, and I'm going to pull both tails into the body. Hello, Shell. Shell says, thanks for a fabulous and festive marathon week of lives. Oh, you're so welcome. Working today and looking forward to catching the replay. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you, Shell. I hope the workday goes by nice and quick. Right, so fasten off and I'm going to pull both of these tails into the inside of the head because they don't need to be out and they can just sit inside the head that's fine We have a membership renewal, or is it a milestone? I think it's a milestone. Big thank you to Donna. Hi, Donna. Thank you. <laughs> Donna's been a member for eight months. Hello, hello. So there's an ear. That's cute. Sticking out the side like that. Yes, yes. Let's do one on the other side now. So slip knot on hook. Join yarn with a slip stitch right in the corner. So get through both pieces. I'm going to go through, I'm trying to go through the, that little chain slip stitch thing that we did, or not slip stitch, chain stitch in the corner, but get into the corner, go through both pieces. And I left my sewing tails out, so it looks a little confusing. So just ignore the sewing tails for now. Join with a slip stitch, making sure you are going through both pieces of his head and he's in the corner. 
Come on. There we go. All right. And let's build an ear. Chain four. Skip the first chain, slip stitch into the second chain, double crochet into the next chain, slip stitch into the last chain, and slip stitch back in the same place where you joined your yarn originally to attach it firmly to the head, and then fasten off. And I'm going to pull both of those short little tails into the head of my... <laughs> I like, I like, okay. So let's see if I can get them both in the same run. Come on. In you go. Let's go. Ah, can't be bothered. Let's trim it. You are going into the stuffing box. All right. So we've got, <laughs> we've got two pokey little ears. I love it. And they can kind of hang out the edges. And now we're gonna make antlers on top. I think I'm done with the sewing threads. So I'm going to weave in and trim any excess. I'll get them out of the way. I leave them out sometimes when I'm not sure if there's maybe some one other little thing I want to do or if I want to firm up a um, an add-on or something. But it looks like these are gonna these ears are gonna stand up pretty pretty nicely on their own. So I'm just gonna some weave people in. feel they see a kangaroo. Other people are saying <laughs> Dobby from Harry Potter. Oh my gosh, Dobby! He does look a bit like Dobby. He does. He's a little. I think he cuter than Dobby. He needs to be more like a gray green or something. Dobby was like ugly cute. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna weave in this tail a little bit, and just back and across the bottom. I knotted this, so I'm not too worried about it coming undone. And then I will get this one out of the way. All right. Trim that. Careful not to get the actual stitches. That can all go in my stuffing box. I'll put that over here. All right. And before I do the antlers, I'm going to have a sip of my coffee. There is enough for a second cup if you like. Is there? Okay, great. Hi, Connie. Connie with a membership milestone. Connie's been a member for 31 months. Thank you, Connie. Connie says, sorry, just got here. So you might have answered this. Will there or will there or is there a pattern for this? There will be a pattern by the end of today for our little candy cane reindeer person. We are designing it on the fly here. So um, I'm actually making notes to the side as we go, just so when I can... After the live stream today, I can write up the pattern, take some decent photographs. I'm going to remake him and I'm going to refine him a little bit. Um, I might even remake him filming as I go so that we can have a little recap video. I don't know. I'll see how much time we have. <laughs> it's already turning into a busy day. Um, but definitely there will be a pattern and uh, we'll make a little post about that when it's up in case you're interested. Now he needs antlers. So let's go. I'm going to go back to that nice cho chocolate brown color. And I'm going to do sort of similar things like I did with the ears. I'm going to join my yarn with a slip stitch. I'm going to make sure I get through a couple of the stitches at the top of his head, making sure I get both edges. So both sides of his head. This will make for a nice firm attachment. I'm going to slip stitch to join my yarn. 
And now I'm going to create, if you saw the little antlers I made for our little Christmas mouse, I'm going to make them similarly. So I'm going to chain a little taller though. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Chaining seven, slip stitching into the next stitch. So skip a chain, slip stitch into the second chain from the hook into the third chain from the hook and into the fourth and the fifth. So slip stitch into the second, third, fourth, and fifth chains from the hook. That'll leave you with two chains down here. But before you get to those, you're going to chain three, slip stitch into the second and third chains from that and back into the same chain that you just left from and then slip stitch into the last two chains. So you're creating a little antler and... Did we get the membership milestone from Connie? We did. We did? Okay. Excellent. Slip stitch to join back in the top of the head there. Oh, that works. That works very nicely. Okay. Um, I'm going to, will I slip stitch across the head? Does it matter if I do that? Nah, that's going to look messy. Okay. Fasten off. That's okay. Fasten off and I will pull those tails into the head of our, so I'm going to make sure they're both nice and tight. <laughs> ah, I love it when something works out. All right, I'm going to pull them both back underneath that joined slip stitch, and then I'm going to pull this, these little tails into the head of the reindeer. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, but I'm going to do it um, facing the other way so that I get, because I can't, because I can't crochet left-handed and I want this antler to be a mirror image, I'm going to crochet the other antler on the other side, but doing it from looking at him from the back. Just wiggling my needle back and forth to kind of get those tails to stay in. And essentially, I'm stuffing his head with all these little tails, so his head's going to have a little bit of poof to it, which I think is kind of great. So there's antler number one. Oh, man. That is cute. Well, this is turning out way better than expected. Yes, I'm delighted with this little guy. Uh, now, I did the first antler with his head facing up. I'm going to flip him over and do antler number two um, facing the other direction so that I get my... Uh, slip stitches to go in the same shape because I can't crochet left-handed. Hi Lynn, thank you for picking up another pattern. So we chain seven. Skip the first chain from the hook and slip stitch into the second, third, fourth, and fifth chains. Chain three. Skip the first chain from the hook, slip stitch into the second and third chains. Slip stitch back into the same place that you just chained out of, and then slip stitch into the remaining two chains on that initial chain of seven. And slip stitch back into the head. Fasten off, make sure those knots are nice and tight. You can even knot those little tails together if you want to, if you're worried about, if you've got like a nice slippery soft yarn, you can knot those tails together and they will not come undone. And then you can pull them into the body of I should say the head. You're pulling them into the head of the reindeer and that will make them disappear. It'll also add a little bit of stuffing to the head, so the head will poof out a little bit, which I just think adds. There we go. All right, so 
There's the back of him. Looks pretty neat and tidy. Definitely looks like a little reindeer from the back. And here's his front. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Too stinking cute. Oh my gosh. So I've got his, his little antlers going in the right way because I used a, um, this is a Red Heart Comfort, which you know is on the sort of the thicker, heavier side of the four weight category. If you're working with DK weight yarn and your yarn isn't super thick, you might want to size down your hook to do the antlers just so you can ensure that you get a nice, stiff, tight chain stitch. And that makes the antlers nice and stiff and they'll stand up straight. <laughs> Cute. Oh my gosh, I love it when it works. And I've got red ribbon. I'm going to give him a nice red ribbon hanger. So I'm going to count uh, count out about 30 centimeters, 12 inches of ribbon and cut that. And I'm going to take my ends together, make a little knot. Once again, Jada brings the cute cute level to like a thousand. Thank you, Annette. You were only supposed to do cuteness level 10. I didn't intend for this to happen. You weren't supposed to go above 10, remember? Uh, Annette just picked up a pattern at her shop. Thank you, Annette. All right. So I'm going to take the folded end of my ribbon and pull it through the middle of the forehead of my um, reindeer here. And then I take the knotted end, I place it back through the fold and I pull and that's how I just easily put a little ribbon hanger on. Oh my gosh. Okay, so here's the trio. <laughs> oh my gosh. We've got our gingerbread man, the original. We have a tutorial for him. That's actually linked in the description box. We've got uh, the little snowman, his buddy. I have a pattern for both of these guys in the shop right now. And we have just designed, at the request of the live chat, a little reindeer. Um, oh my gosh, he's cute. And I will be writing this pattern up today, and it'll be in the shop. It'll be part of the, the uh, Black Friday sale, so it will also be on sale when it goes in the shop today. And uh, we'll put a little note up about that. Um, golly, I don't know which one's my favorite now. I keep, I keep making more. I made a ton of these. Let me go grab them all. Well, you know now you're going to have to do the Santa Claus and the elf. And what was the other one you said? The, uh, uh, you were gonna do um, the angel, Miss, the, the angel, and then Miss Santa Claus. I did. I Mrs. did. Mrs. Claus. More and more. I so I did three. I just <laughs> love these so much. I made two of my little Santas. It's I a candy made cane party. Three of my gingerbread cookies. Um, uh, one of these things is not like the other. Um, and now I've got the reindeer. So I will be <laughs> making him again today. Um, to fill out the pattern, I'll be taking some really nice clear photographs. Um, I tried him in, in the chocolate brown to start. Um, I might finish this guy just to have one in chocolate brown to see what it looks like. But I'll be making the pattern with the photos based on the lighter color, obviously, because it's a lot easier to see. Uh, and But you can make your reindeer any color you want. Um, I'm using, you know what the, I'm, I'm using um, Skeen Tone by, uh, one of the Skeen Tones by Lion Brand. Um, because they have fantastic skin tone shades and any one of those would actually make a really nice reindeer. So I'm using one, this is the almond, I think, um, that I'm using for the reindeer. Oh my gosh. Anyway, um, so there we go. This is <laughs> what a lineup. This is, it's like, it's like, it's like a, uh, um, a lineup at the, um, you know, when, you, when you're, the, you go to the police station and you're being asked to identify somebody, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is the lineup. Okay, ma'am, can you tell me who, who stole your purse full of candy canes? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, and they're all like nervously <laughs> shuffling around. The only one that stands out is the reindeer. Poor exactly. Guy. <laughs> and, and he's like, he's like kind of looking nervous. He's like looking left and looking right. Like, hey, I don't, I don't think this is fair. Can you see the character that stole your purse in this lineup? <laughs> The reindeer sweating. <laughs> He's 
sweating. He's got, you know, he's, he's the only one not smiling. He's like he's trying nice. to make his antlers small so that he doesn't stand out as much. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. Um are there any questions? I know this was kind of a this was a, a much longer live stream than we anticipated it happening to it, but uh you know what? You guys picked reindeer and this is what happened. So uh I love it. I absolutely love how he came out. Now, and I like him because he he kind of he's in the same sort of format as the rest of these guys. Um I know you don't usually see a uh a, a reindeer walking around on his hind legs but for that matter you don't usually see a snowman or a gingerbread man wandering around on on two candy cane legs either these are sort of little stilt people but um i love it <laughs> yes yeah, this beans the red the one with the red nose <laughs> <laughs> guilty guilty Everyone's too busy laughing right now. Oh my god! There are no questions, just laughter. This was so fun. I loved making this little guy. Oh my gosh. Um, we are oh Nico. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Thank Nico, you, Nico has gifted another membership, and Ellen has won it. Welcome back, Ellen. I'm still working on my little cup of coffee here. All right, guys. I think, I think we are going to call it there. Um, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us this week during our marathon week of live streams. We live streamed every single day. Every day this week we made a little extra something that you could add to your make ahead stash for the holidays. We've got a couple of ornaments. Um, we've got something handy for the kitchen. We've got a cute little mouse that makes a cute ornament or even just a little toy. Uh, maybe a pet toy too. So we've got all sorts of little goodies that we did this week. And um, we've got tutorial backups for all of them. So I will probably make a little recap tutorial of this guy, um, possibly not today, but down the road because I think I think this is worth having. We do have a tutorial for our gingerbread man. Um, and we have a pattern for both of these guys in the shop. And if you, um, uh, if you need help with the basic construction of the body, it's very similar to the gingerbread man. So if you need to look at the tutorial for that, that can help you with that too. Uh, it's very, very similar. And um, we will definitely have a pattern for our little reindeer up in the shop later with lots of helpful photographs. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful weekend. If you are still enjoying a long weekend from Thanksgiving, then I hope the rest of the weekend is fun and crafty and peaceful. And for the rest of us who are heading into a regular weekend, happy weekend. This has been a lovely Friday hanging out with you guys. I hope you guys have a splendid couple of days ahead that the weather isn't too cold or too hot and we'll see you all next week next week is fair isle style week friday is technically december the first it's the first friday in december so we will be doing our um friday uh fair isle friday pattern that'll be the tutorial that'll be the last edition to the month editions of the blanket but we will have a border for you after that um, that'll be coming a little bit later. If you're in a hurry though, we do have other borders that you can use for to, to finish off your blanket if you want to kind of get it done and, and out of the way. Um, and if you have any questions about that, then we'll make a little post about that sometime next week. So um, yeah, anyway, have you guys a wonderful weekend. Is there anything you'd like to add, Mr. Stitches? No, I think you've pretty much covered it all. Great. Just to remind everyone, we have our biggest sale in our Etsy shop is this weekend from today to Monday. Yes. So if you've been eyeing anything, this is the best time to get it in the whole year. Um, or if you have anything in your cart. And there was something else I wanted to mention, but I forgot. All right. Well, if you think of it, you I can... mentioned Friday is the uh, that's the final the final. Um... That's the final fair aisle. Yeah, the final fair mm -hmm. aisle. Next Friday. So that's next Friday. Um. We'll let everyone know if we're going to stream uh, on Monday. We'll send out a, a post about that. Mm -hmm. um, Avi asks if we have socials, if they, if, if you want to share the patterns. If you want to share photos with us, you can send them to us at our Etsy shop. And if it's okay for us to share with everybody, let us know, because we do create posts in the community tab for everybody to see people's patterns. Um, anytime somebody makes something, uh, one of our projects we like to create little sort of like uh, pattern roundups or project roundups and share those 
Um, we are technically on Twitter and Instagram, but we're not there very often. So um, the best way to get us a photograph that you want to share with us is over at our Etsy shop. And you don't have to have an account. You can just pop in, click message shell seller, and then uh, click on the little uh, camera icon or landscape icon that lets you take a picture or upload a picture to include in your message thread to us. Um, and Mr. Stitch has just added the link to our shop in the description box and you can pop over there and click message seller. So you can always um, ask us a question about our patterns or submit a pattern picture to us there. And we're always happy to take a look. Thank you guys. I'm starting to lose my voice here. Not surprising. I've been talking all week to you. <laughs> Obviously I need more coffee. We'll see you next week. We'll keep you posted. Uh, keep an eye on the community tab for more fun information throughout the weekend. And, um, We'll see you soon. Have a great weekend, everybody.